Hello and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm back at the beach. We're painting another scene, this time in acrylics. And I'm going to focus on a different aspect of the beach scene. We're going to be looking more at the sky, at a beautiful stormy and cloudy scene. I hope you can join me and enjoy this painting demonstration. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I painted a beach scene looking in one direction. Now I'm turning around and looking at the opposite direction and, and that has revealed something different once again. This time the clouds are coming in, uh, really bold and, and stormy looking clouds. So I've simply dropped the horizon line and given more emphasis to the sky. Now I'm painting this one in acrylics, last time was in oils, but this just illustrates the, the truth that using an opaque medium like oils, acrylics or gouache, you can paint the way you always paint, but the medium's going to give you a different look. Let the medium do the work. You paint on oils, you do the same scene in acrylics, it's going to look different even though you've painted the same way. Now a lot of artists get really stuck on I'm just painting in acrylics or I'm just painting in oils. You don't need to do that. You can use oils, acrylics or gouache. You're going to be able to paint the same subject the way you always paint. But the medium is going to give the different look and feel to the scene. So try these mediums out and enjoy them. Let them do the work. You just bring yourself to the painting and have fun. Now, if you want to try this painting out, I've got a free course for you up here where I've taken a select few of my YouTube videos and put them there with the references that you can download and try the painting out for yourself. Follow the link up here or in the description and you will be sorted. Now, let's start painting this beautiful beach scene. I'm going to start off with a quick sketch. I'm working on an A3 piece of paper, just a pencil getting the main composition elements, taking a bit of extra time in this one perhaps with the, the drawing but I find with acrylics I do like to get a drawing in. Perhaps it's because the acrylics are actually quite uh, thin and transparent compared to oils that are really thick from the start. So get the biggest shapes in for the, the sky. I don't want to do too much with the clouds except block in the big shapes. A typical palette of acrylic colors. I tend to use a bit more than I would with oils. A couple of extras. Now with the burnt sienna and ultramarine and getting the, the distant sand dunes blocked in little bit of white and blue or with the blue and now a bit of magenta and blue to create that softer atmospheric perspective cool down those distant darks and soften them up a bit I'm mixing up as you can see some light colors but a touch of red in there just helps to uh, cool down that distant beach color. You may say I can red cool that down but remember compared to the foreground beach color it'll be white with yellow and yellow ochre so that will be warmer than the pinkish tone. The wet sand is also uh, leaning towards the pinkish tones as well. Now getting a big brush number 10 I'm using all acrylic brushes. These are made by Dale Rowney for acrylic painting. Very good brushes, really do last forever. But warmer in the foreground, as I was saying, a touch of lemon yellow coming into that white. But this is still early stages, so just block in the main shapes. Yellow ochre, ultramarine, getting that uh, dune grass in in the foreground. Of course acrylics dry quickly and we must use that to our advantage by painting with lots of layers. 
wet over dry it's easy to achieve if you work different parts of the painting you can always come back to those parts that have dried in the meantime and go over them resting assured you're not going to be muddying up the paint the sea colors as well quite light at this stage but as I said these are the blocking in layers don't get too caught up don't get too stressed out by having to make it all perfect from the very first brush stroke that is a futile way to paint in my opinion just proceed one stroke at a time and come back in with those extra layers to refine the shapes add that extra richness of color all right a bit of uh, red with that or magenta with the ultramarine bringing the violet colors into the painting there's a lot of violet going to be incorporated in this painting as you can see with the the sky and a lot of that color has to reflect back into the the sea the rocks in the foreground burnt sienna and blue just uh, dragging those shapes in trying to break them up a little but we will do that further as the painting develops in the meantime simply put that in first layers now with a big brush let's get in the strong darks in the sky ultramarine magenta perhaps also ultramarine and red and burnt sienna to get that really juicy dark purple one of the mixes I also use for sky colors is blue and orange then you bring in a touch of white and you get that gray color of course orange and blue are complementary colors so you are going to get a graying down of the paint but you can make it warm or cool depending on how much orange or blue you add keep the white to a minimum just enough but not too much or you're going to lose your color intensity I'm trying to be also mindful of edges you'll see as we get to the white clouds coming into the painting edges become so important you just got to work quickly with acrylics so your edges don't get too dry otherwise you're constantly fighting the paint so while it's still wet try to smudge those edges overlap them soften them up and you'll get that more authentic looking cloud shapes so all sorts of varieties of magenta ultramarine blue sky blue white it's the primary sort of colors i'm using or i should say main colors that i'm using for the stormy sky and then as i said i'll bring in a bit of orange and blue for the lighter gray colors there we go some orange in there you can see how it grays things up touch of red <laughs> So you, you work your mix and uh, try to circle in and get to what you need. When you look at that color on the palette, it looks really gray, doesn't it? But put it on the canvas or on your paper and it looks right. Uh, it's actually a lot more vibrant than you thought. That's because we're not mixing uh, muddy colors. Muddy colors will look lifeless on your canvas. We are mixing what we call sympathetic grays gray colors or neutral colors that enhance the scene that are authentic for the lighting effects
Now, one thing you'll notice as well is as the painting develops, I'm using the reference more and more for guidance, but not being a slave to the reference either, especially with the sky like this. Eventually, it takes on a life of its own and you are developing a scene that is a little different to your reference photo. I think that's a good thing in most cases, especially a vague and ever-changing subject like a sky. It's not a, a building perhaps that has to look absolutely uh, correct. A bit more burnt sienna to get these stronger darks. That's sort of the anchor of the cloudscape. So get a good strong few shapes in those darks and all your lights will work off that base. A few vertical horizontal strokes as well. Kind of suggesting some rain perhaps in the distance there. Roll the brush around, twist it slightly, let the shapes develop an organic look simply by letting the brush roll around. Now into the edges of clouds where there is more light coming through, I add variety to the, the scene by Softening up the, the blues, bringing a little more light into them. This is the lightest part of the sky, using sky blue, white, a little bit of yellow ochre as well. Notice the soft edges. As light diffuses around those edges, they must be very soft and vaporous. Right, let's get more color on, and the quickest way to do that is with a painting knife. And uh, you're using acrylics, of course, but you can still layer on the paint with a painting knife. The quickest and best way to get in a lot of paint. Put more yellow ochre for this warmish color. Now I'm using the knife to, as I said, put down a lot more paint and get a much more, uh, well in this case it's a flatter surface but the paint is much thicker and therefore looks more intense, which we want for these lights. But then I'll take the brush and soften up the edges once again, otherwise it's going to look a little, or a little too me mechanical really. Like it's just been laid down and left alone. With a painting knife you need to look at your edges and make sure they're not too hard. Does it look too disjointed and pasted on? With clouds you definitely got to work those edges back. So spread the paint around a little but try and be restrained. Don't lose the texture and the volume you got on there. It's a fine balancing act. But if you get it wrong, don't despair. You can just let it dry a little bit. Ten minutes later, you probably can paint over it if you need to. Violet, blue, the main colors in a stormy sky. Just dragging the brush a little, getting a slight scumbled effect. Now I want to lighten things up a little, and that's the thing with acrylics, isn't it? They tend to dry a little less vibrant, and it happens so quickly. 
then I come back in and realize I need to make a color a bit lighter or bring a little more a lighter violet into it. And you can do this for some time and maybe you start losing patience with yourself. You think you're going in circles. This is the middle ugly stage of a painting and with acrylics it tends to really come up on you and you you feel you are going backwards you just cannot progress this is the time when you have to just calm down stick to your vision and persist before you know it the painting pulls together and you notice everything is looking right at that point your painting is pretty much done and you can just refine a few things add a few extra details few highlights, perhaps, or some dark accents. This dark over here, I feel, is now looking a little out of place, so I'm pushing it more to the dark violet color range. A little bit of red and orange into that blue to get this deeper uh, gray, the stormy gray color. It's a funny thing painting clouds, you realize that nature is the ultimate artist and uh, we are merely getting a representation but seldom can an artist improve on a sky scene uh, there's simply uh, too much lighting too much that is impossible to replicate we can do our best but it is a, a noble challenge I think for landscape artists paint many sky scenes it'll teach you a lot about shapes and edges. Now I've swapped to a round brush to get the lighter accents onto the clouds. I'll look for that counter change between light and dark to add that sparkle. Broken color, letting some of that lower color now show through. Don't forget to stand back and have a look at your painting. See if it starts to pull together. Are the, all the parts that you've put down, are they working together? Is it looking authentic? Some artists like to look at their painting in a mirror. Maybe you hold up a mirror behind you and have a look. Or there's a mirror on your studio wall and you can just have a look at that. That reverse image sometimes shows up discordant shapes and you can see what you need to focus on. Just trying to get a little bit of variety. Now back to the horizon line and just going to try and get that sea merging into the distant sand dunes. A lot of this sea is going to be covered with waves and scumbled lighter colors. But uh, right now I'm getting the foundation accurate or as reasonably accurate as I can before I work over it with any highlights.
some red into the, the violet. Although I intend to paint over a lot of this, maybe some of these colors are going to show through in the or against the whitish yellows. So always think of complementary color relationships to make your colors stand out more. Violets and yellows, a beautiful combination. Touch of green, just by bringing some yellow ochre into the, the blues gets that subtle greenish sea color. Trying to be very patient here, yeah? work on the foundation, keep building that up before I go into the highlights. I think these distant sand dunes are still a bit too dark. So I'm going to push them further back with a grayish or grayish violet color. And now bringing some light into that distant area, a little more interest and sparkle against those strong dark sky colors. Lightening up the, the distant dunes like this is bringing a little more depth into the, the scene. And now some light on these grasses brings that forward and hopefully gives the painting a sense of greater depth and dimension. Right now to get into the foreground here and breaking up these dark shapes of the rocks with a few grayish colors. A few final highlights back in those dunes before I start working on the, the water and the foreground, particularly the wave shapes. Small wave shapes in the distance using the round brush and quite a lot of white paint, a touch of yellow ochre in it. Just let the brush ride along and slightly scumble the, the wave shapes. Try to mimic the shape of the wave. One part of the wave will be falling over and that will be the the large white shape and then it just trails off and more blue remains visible. I'm going to take this the wet sand and the, the waves further in, as you can see on the reference. 
and give me more space to get those scumbled highlights in. Now here's lovely dark colors in which to put these bright highlights against. The tendency is to overdo this. If you feel you have gone too far, let the paint dry, fix that up. I've got a larger flat brush, short flat with uh, white paint and yellow, and try to scumble that shallow uh, wave colors, those, the foam of those waves. And to get an effective scumbled look, you've got to paint wet over dry and let the brush, just pull the brush lightly over that dry paint below. Bring a bit of light amongst these dark rock shapes. Adds more sparkle, a little more life in the foreground. Soften that edge up between the, the dune and the light water. Now we're going to mix up a bit more paint and just get some good paint volume down. White and pink and then white and deep yellow to get some variety in the sand in the foreground. This extra texture is great with acrylics because that's the one thing with acrylics they tend to settle as they dry and you want to have some texture and volume in the foreground so layer it on butter it on nice and thick a few random marks here or there a little bit of burnt sienna highlights on the the rocks Add a little bit of warm color in the foreground and of course a figure to lend some scale, a bit of human interest as well. And a focal point for the, the painting or secondary focal point. There's a couple of darks on the beach ahead there, things like seaweed, etc. that have washed up. But the way I see it is it just breaks up perhaps an area that is a little flat with uh, slightly darker color notes. grass shapes and I think we're pretty much getting to the end but of course who can resist a few little light accents a few highlights just some last touches Sign it off and let's get the tape off and have a look. I've enjoyed this painting. It is a challenge, but I think the end result is still pleasing. So have a go. Hope you enjoy it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. As you can see, this is a perfect opportunity for beginners to try their hand at landscape painting. So if that's you, have a go. Get the free reference up here. Try the painting out for yourself. Now, this can be as easy or as complicated as you want to make it. If you're an experienced painter, you can bring something different to this scene. That's the beauty of landscape painting. Everybody's unique interpretation comes along automatically and you create something that's truly your own. Now this is a beautiful time of year as well to take a break from the frenetic runaround of December and take some calm time and paint. Just painting will improve your day. So try it out. All right, enjoy it. And until next time, cheers for now.